الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala A praise worthy of his loftiness and his greatness and his supremacy and we glorify him and we thank him for the favors that he has bestowed upon us and we thank him for this great religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for us and has guided us to and we ask him to make us firm upon this religion and to make us from amongst the thankful and to make us from amongst the righteous and to provide us with obedience and to provide us with reverence to him the most high subhanahu wa ta'ala and we send peace and blessings upon our prophet Muhammad and upon his companions and his family and those that follow him into until yawm al qiyamah today we have a small advice and we want to look at the importance of being steadfast upon the religion of Islam and recognizing good for exactly what it is now I'm in the importance of embarking upon it and recognizing the evil for what it is and abstaining for it and knowing that this religion of Islam is a religion of, of amal, a religion of, of good deeds now the time that we live in you see very, and particularly in these later days that a lot of people are doing everything they can and are going out of their way and are showing a lot of concern with their health they watch their sugar their cholesterol their high, their high blood pressure and this no doubt is good there's no doubt is good people are trying to lose weight people are exercising some people are jogging and running those who can't jog they even walk um, people are walking more they have special sneakers for jogging they even have now walking shoes with a different from jogging shoes track shoes and all of that is good but who is going to try to keep their minds healthy and their bodies healthy no matter how much you may exercise your body is going to deteriorate now it's going to deteriorate it's going to go down it's going to decline now the soul of mankind and the heart of mankind when it's rightly directed uh, it increases and it enhances and it improves and it becomes more pure the more the tauba the more the good deeds and this is why it's important for us to be upon goodness and upon good deeds and try to establish something that we can live upon. Naam, that we can live upon. Everybody wants some type of uh, financial stability. Where they have income coming in. They have a constant income coming in. And with this constant income, they're able to pay their bills. And not only pay their bills, they're able to buy things to make their life a little more comfortable. Even if they're not rich, they want to be comfortable. Now, and we have to understand the importance of having this regarding good deeds. That we want to have income coming in with regarding our good deeds because you're going to need it. And if anybody, if there's anybody who's not thinking about his grave every day, then he's, he's fast asleep. He's fast asleep. How's your situation going to be in the future? You want to prepare your future? Your future's in your grave. Picture your grave right now. Just take a time right now. Picture the people around their gra your grave. They, they've dug your grave up. And you're in the shroud. And now they're going to enter you into the grave. And what's going to be with you in your grave? There's no air conditioning. There's no heating. If you were buried with any jewelry, which is not permissible, it wouldn't benefit you none. If you were buried with any weapons, knives, or guns, or bullets, it, it, it wouldn't benefit you none. The only thing that's going to be benefit you is what? Yes, you guessed it. Your good deeds. Nah. And this is where your future is. It's on your good deeds. Nah. 
So we want to have some income coming in. Now, even in Islam, our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he explains to us, "Ida mata insan in qata'a amluhu illa min thalath: sadaqatin jariya, jariya, or ilmin yuntafa'u bi, or waladin salihan yadu'ula." If man, if a man dies, his good deeds are cut off; they stop. Except from three. So before we look at these three, we want to look at this main part of the hadith that when somebody dies, his good deeds are over. I mean, this is the time to do the work. This is the time to do the work. They have their income coming in and to save up what you can save. Now, this, this is real. This is more real than controlling your cholesterol and your sugar. Maybe you're not supposed to eat sweets and even fructose like mangoes. And, and grapes Maybe you're not supposed to eat that stuff Because it might spike up your sugar nah, it's, it's good to avoid those things nah, And certain uh, You getting upset And certain things you do It might increase your, your, your blood pressure nah, It's good to stay away from those things But now we're talking about the hair after nah, We're talking about the hair after That which is going to benefit you Is not your good looks It's not your cosmetics It's not the people you know nah, But it's your good deeds nah, It's your good deeds so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that when somebody dies, his deeds are cut off, and you can't do anymore. This is the opportunity now that you have to do good deeds, except from three: sadaqa tinjariya. Yeah, there's a sadaqa that after you die, it's a it's a service, or there's something that you left that the people keep benefiting from it, something that you established, naam, and you benefit benefit from it while you're in your grave, meaning. This way, your your good deeds continue. It's it's almost like maybe that some people who may have money or income or some type of business, if they don't think about this, it's like you're you're heedless, you're you're asleep, you're not aware. Why why don't you plan for the real future? Now um, the future is not when you graduate and you get a job. All that's going to end. Your job is going to end. Your good looks are going to end. That physique and that waistline. And that height and that nice hair, it's all going to end. So let's let's try to plan for something. It's good to keep your hair nice and smooth and your face nice and clean. MashaAllah, that's good. It's, it's not blameworthy to put emphasis on the whiteness of your teeth. That's good. That's good. But let's let's look a little further. Nah, and when we're going to meet Allah, nah, when we're going to pass, that's the real, real future. That's the real future. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this hadith says that when somebody dies, all of his deeds are cut off, except from a, a continuing charity that it continues to flow after he passes. Now it could be it, it could be a book that he's published. It could be a a, a a house that he turned to a masjid. Just for example, now it's a thousands of examples. But you, it's for you to have ingenuity and be creative and try to do that. O ilmin yuntafa'u bi. I mean, you have knowledge that you wrote books, or you have classes, or you have students, naam, and the people benefit from your students. Oh, waladin salihan yadu'ullah, that your children, and it's walid salih. So it's encouraged for you to raise your children to be upon righteousness. And teach your children to make du'a for when you pass. And teach your children to make du'a for their par grandparents, and that you make du'a for their grandparents, and you teach them. These things are very, very important. Today, we're going to look at this verse and some other verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at the end of Surah Al An'am, verse number 158. <laughs> أو كسبت في إيمانها خيرا قل انتظروا إنا منتظرون الله سبحانه وتعالى says are they waiting they're not waiting except for the ملائكة to come and Allah سبحانه وتعالى says هل ينظرون نعم are they waiting and hell you call it شبه نفيا this is almost like negation and it means negation they're not waiting 
Meaning they're not that they they, they they didn't stop doing any good deeds. They didn't stop leaving off deen and leaving off adherence and leaving off that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded with. They didn't delay in these things except that perhaps they're waiting for the malaika to come and take them. What is stopping them from doing good deeds and embarking upon Qaid? Hal Yamzuruna illa an ta'tiahumul malaika. Are they waiting except that the malaika come to them? You know, when a malaika comes to them, the angels come to them, this is when they die. This is when they die. Now, I mean, when the malaika come and they take their souls. Are they waiting? Is this what delays you? What are you waiting for? And when are you going to be obedient to Allah? When are you going to adhere as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stipulated it? Naam. Oh, yati a rock book. Oh, when Allah comes, meaning Yom al Qiyamah, when Allah comes down and He decides between His servants. Oh, yati ba'bu ayati rabbik. Oh, when some of the signs of your law comes, meaning, uh, qurb sa'a, the signs of Yom al Qiyamah, the signs of the day of resurrection, and this is when the sun raises up from the west. Uh, 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 when are you going to start doing good deeds? Uh, what do you? What was it that you you're waiting for? What is it that is delaying you from doing these tremendous deeds and these good deeds and this um, and this obedience to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? And this is how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, 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 poses this in, in this ayah. He says. Do they then wait for anything other than the angels to come? Or what are they waiting for? Nah. -uh. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned these three things that happen, meaning waiting for the angels to come, meaning are you waiting for death to come for you to realize that you have to start? Are you waiting for actual Yom Qiyamah when Allah comes? Or when the signs of Allah comes which is close to Yom Qiyamah? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ يَأْتِي بَعْضُ آيَاتِ رَبِّكْ لَا يَنْفَعُ نَفْسًا إِيمَانُهَا When it, the, the day that some of the signs of Allah come, you know, the day that the sun raises up from the west, and it comes in, um, in the hadith in Sahih Bukhari, in the explanation of this ayah, that Allah, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when the sun comes up from the west, هَذَا يَوْمْ this is the day that a soul that the faith of a person won't benefit him meaning this is the situation of the disbelievers that when they die this is when they believe this is when they believe in Allah when they're dying this is when they believe in the hereafter but it's too late it's too late yawm yeah. Yati ba'du ayati rabbik the day that some of the signs of your Lord will come. La yanfa'u nafsan imanuha lam takun aminat min qabl. The faith of the individual will not benefit him if he didn't believe before. This is for the disbelievers. The disbeliever, his faith that day, his faith in Allah. And his faith in the reality of the hereafter, it won't benefit that day. Aw kasabat fi imaniha khayran. Or somebody who had iman but didn't do any good with their iman. Didn't establish any good deeds. And this is the believer. La yanfa'u nafsan imanuha. A person won't benefit from the iman if what? If they didn't believe before. Or they didn't earn any good deeds with their iman. They believe, but it, their belief didn't prevent them from falling into the haram. And their belief didn't push them into obedience to Allah. قُلْ Allah says, say to them, Muhammad, say to these two people, say to the disbelievers, and say to the Muslims that are heedless and disobedient, say to them, wait. Really, we are waiting. Nah, meaning, say to them, wait and carry on and don't do good deeds. And very Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's also waiting and He's going to bring this day upon us. So today we want to look at the importance of doing good deeds. Nah, Imam Muslim, he has a chapter in his book, Bab al Hasu al al Mubadari bil A'mal qabla tawahu lil fitin. 
the encouragement to rush into good to doing good deeds before the fitting and the temptations overwhelm. Now, then he brings the hadith of Abi Huraira that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Badiru bil a'mal fitanan qaqita al layl al mudlam yusbihu al rajul mu'minan wa yumsi kafiran." أو يمسي مؤمنا ويصبح كافرا يبيع دينه بعرض من الدنيا وفي رواية لأحمد يبيع دينه بعرض من الدنيا قليل Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says as this hadith that comes in uh, Sahih Muslim also there's a riwaya a narration that comes in Ahmed rush to do good deeds badiru rush don't 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 be slow about it. Don't be lackadaisical about it. Don't be lazy about doing good deeds. Rush to do good deeds. Naam. Fitanan qatiti al layl al muslim. There's there are there are fitan. The word fitan is the plural for fitan. There are temptations and trials and tribulations. Temptations in your deen that make you jeopardize your deen. Naam. Qatiti al layl al muslim. It's like uh, it's like the darkness of the night. The darkness of the night, the, the night, it comes up from the eastern sky, and as the sun sets, the night, it covers the sky slowly and slowly and slowly until it takes over the whole entire sky, and the whole entire sky is black. And this is what happens to somebody in their religion, that they leave off, the, they leave off good deeds, and the bad deeds overruns their religion until their whole religion becomes black in doubt. Naam. Fitanan taqita al layl al muslim. That there are fitan, there are temptations that spread just as the night spreads. Uh, what happens is, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Yusbihur rajulu mu'minan yumsika wa yumsika afinan. That man, he will come into the day, he's, he's a believer, he's a, he's a mu'min and in the day. But by the time the evening comes, from so many temptations, he's a disbeliever. He has fallen into certain sins. That has taken him out of the realm of Islam. Oh, you see, mu'minan wa yusbihu kafiran. Oh, he goes into the night. He's a believer, but going through the whole night. By the time the morning comes, he has left the deen. Why? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Yabiru dinahu bi aradun min dunya." He sells his religion from something from the religion. From, from from something he sells his religion from something from some from some worldly possessions from some worldly benefit he sells his religion for some worldly benefit now and in the narration for, from ahmed it says yabi adina hu bi arada min dunya qalil he says he sells his religion for a small thing from this world he sells his religion meaning he substitutes obedience for disobedience Something of obedience that its its religion is based on this thing. It determines is is something that if he if he substitutes this matter, he's going to lose his religion, and the people are going to be willing to sacrifice and jeopardize their religion for affairs of this world, even for something trivial or something small from the affairs of this world. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for His protection. And we want to recognize that there is no substitute for good deeds. There's no, there's no substitute. So you have to do the good deeds, whether you're white, whether you're black, whether you come from a Muslim family, whether you don't come from a Muslim family, whether your, your forefathers were oppressed and they were victimized and they were wronged, even if that's the case, you have to do good deeds. Nobody's entitled. Nobody's entitled that they can do what they want to do, or they have the rights more than any, no matter what their past was, no matter what their lineage is. The Prophet, there's a chapter, Imam Bukhari, he says, or rather, there's a, in, in, in this hadith of Abi Huraira, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says at the end of the hadith, مَنْ بَطَّأَ بِهِ عَمَلُوا لَمْ يُسْرِئْ بِهِ نَسُبُوا Whoever his good deeds has slowed him down. I mean, because he has a lack of deeds. So the lack of him having good deeds has slowed him down. It has, it has slowed him down. The lack of his good deeds has slowed him down because he doesn't have any. 
have the, his deeds has slowed him down because of lack of it, or because there are bad deeds has slowed him down. Nam yusrit bihi nesubuhu. His affiliation and his lineage and the people who know and the things he's affiliated with, it will not speed him up or move him up in the front. Nah, it will not speed him up. It will not help him. Nah. So with this in mind, we want to take a day. We want to take today to look at. Now, there are things of the life of this world that people think is good. And because the fact that they like it or there's some benefit in it, they think that they can substitute their religion for this thing because it's so-called good or it's so-called beneficial. Now, so this means that you don't have to make salah or what this means that you can engage in haram or this means that you, you can take off your hijab because this thing is beneficial. No, that, that, that doesn't mean that. Uh -uh. That doesn't mean that. So we want to take a look at some things and we really want to try to come to an understanding that good is what Allah and His Messenger state as good. Yeah. And that bad is what Allah and His Messenger state as bad. Yeah. And that we want to uh, make big and exalt and, and, and put attention that which Allah and His Messenger put attention to. And we want to uh, ignore and belittle and think small of that which Allah and His Messenger think small of. Imam Al Bukhari has a, a chapter, Hujabat al Naru bi Shahawat. The hellfire has been covered with desires. Nah. So Imam Bukhari, after mentioning this uh, chapter, he brings the hadith of Abi Huraira that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Hujibat al-Nar bil Shahawat wa Hujibat al-Jannah bil Makarih." Hujibat means it comes. This is where the word hijab comes from, and hijab is a covering of the woman. Hijab is a covering. Now, so you can't see this thing, and the way that you get to this thing, you have to take this covering off to get to it. Now. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, the hellfire has been covered with desires, and Jannah has been covered, paradise has been covered with difficulties and things that you dislike. Now, the hellfire, what is it covered with? It's covered with desires. So the ulama explain what did this mean? Hujibat, it means wukiyat. I mean, it's been covered with these things. I mean, the joys. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the, the joys and the delicious things and enjoyable things that the legislation of Islam prohibit us from engaging in. Naam. These are the things that surround the hellfire. Things that lead to leaving off the wajib, leaving off the salah, or things that lead to falling into the haram. Naam. This what? The hellfire is surrounded with. Now, okay. وَحُجِبَتِ الْجَنَّةِ بِالْمَكَارِهِ Jannah has been, has been covered with makarih. Karih, it comes from the word kariha to dislike. It's been uh, covered with things that in it is difficulty. Now, that the nafs, the soul of mankind, doesn't necessarily love to do it. He only does it with what? With difficulty. Now, from the things of obedience and the things of leaving off the haram. Uh -huh. And this word uh, hujibat, you know, it, it conveys that this hijab, this 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 veil, this veil, the one who pulls down the veil of something reaches it. So if uh, one who pulls down the veil and pulls down this screen, when he pulls it down, he reaches this thing. I mean, whoever pulls down the veil of desires, now, um, whoever pulls down this veil and enters into the desires and gets and, and gets a hold of it and really hatakahadil hijab and pulls it down and indulges in it, this is that goes into the hellfire. Now, and the one who pulls down the veil of going through difficulties and hardships of being obedient to Allah and staying away from the haram, whoever pulls down this veil is the one that gets into Jannah. Now, there's a there's a hadith that comes like this. In Muslim, but the hadith in Muslim is what from hadith of Anas. The first hadith that we just read was from Abi Huraira. 
It comes from the hadith of Anas, but the word huffatil janna bil makarih wa huffatun nar bil shahawat. Imam Muslim has huffat instead of hujibat. Huffat means that jannah is surrounded with the things that are difficult. And the hellfire is surrounded with shahawat. And just from a side benefit, the, from the hadith from Bukhari is in is Baha Abu Huraira. And this hadith that's a Muslim is from the hadith of Anas. This kind of thing, you don't call this mutafakun alay. Mutafakun alay, it, it has to be the same companion. And the wording of the hadith doesn't have to be exactly the same, but it has to be close in meaning. But if the hadith comes in Bukhari, for like example, like this hadith that's in Ab, on Abi Huraira, and then the one in Muslims on Anas, like in this hadith, that you don't say that's mutafakun alay. You say this one is in Bukhari, and that one is in Muslim. Back to the, the meaning of this hadith, when it says that Jannah is surrounded by these things, meaning you is no way for you to get to Jannah except by indulging in makara, things that you dislike, things that's difficult on the show, things that you have to try to get used to. Naam wa nar bi shahawat that the hellfire is surrounded with shahawat, meaning by you indulging in following your desires, this is a path to the hellfire. So we don't want to sell our religion. Now, and we don't want to sell our religion. When you sell it means substitute it and jeopardize it. Now, and compromise it. And compromise it for desires. When we say desires meaning things that you like. I like this. And it might not be what Allah and His Messenger has prescribed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we want to look at a couple of ayats. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says just to look at this thing of dislike and the things that you do like naam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says kutiba alaykum al qital wa huwa kurhun lakum fighting struggling has been prescribed for you all I mean you muslims wa huwa kurhun lakum and is disliked by you kurhun means like from makarih kurhun is disliked by you وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَقْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ Perhaps you dislike something, but it's good for you, meaning for your soul and for your, your yourself. You might dislike it, but it's good for you. And this we want to understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created us from nothing, He knows what's beneficial for us and that which is harmful for us. And us believing in this, this is what Iman is on. That's what Iman is based on, believing in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in his book and believing in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent his messenger with and overlooking what we personally like and what our soul uh, inclines to and gravitates to. So uh, Allah is telling us, Asa an takrahu shay'an wa huwa khayrun lakum. Perhaps it's very likely that you may dislike something but it's good for you. And perhaps you like something and your, your, your soul inclines to it and your mind likes it and you enjoy this thing. But it's evil for you and it's harm for you and it's a detrimental it's detrimental for you in this world and after. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamu. Allah knows and you don't know. What does Allah know? Allah knows that which is good for you and that which is bad for you. What is it that you don't know? You don't know what's good for you. Except that you study what Allah stipulated. And you don't know what's evil for you and what's harmful for you and what's detrimental for you. You don't know until you follow and study Islam. And if, if, if that's not the case, just look at the disbelievers. Just look at the lives of the disbelievers and don't, don't, who don't have guidance. They don't know how to, they don't know istinja, if even just cleaning themselves. They don't know how to dress. And these, these are uh, smaller things compared to other things. Now, I'm, cause smaller issues compared to fawahish and ibadat and, 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 and indecencies and things of this nature. Now, I'm, so we have to submit to this reality. The one that created our soul knows what's good for it. And the fact that something that your soul might like it and really is inclined to it and really uh, uh, it appreciates this thing and likes it and is inclined to it and gravitates to it, that's not the judgment 
in deciding whether something is good or bad. I like it. It really, I'm really inclined to it. I enjoy it. Or the fact that you dislike something, or the fact that it's difficult. Nah, that's not something to determine the fact that you dislike it, that you should turn away from it. Or that this world is only full of joys and you can't uh, embark upon difficulties. No, you have to go through it. And Allah will make it easy for you. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes in the hadith of, uh, uh, I don't remember the Sahabi, the Prophet uh, Zayd ibn Arqam. Naam. Allah uh, adullukum ala ma yarfa'u bi ala ma yamhu Allahu bihi al-khataya wa yarfa' bihi al-darajat. Should I not inform you of that which, if you do this thing, Allah wipes away the sins and he raises the ranks. I said, of course. So the Prophet mentioned three things. We're just going to mention one. The first thing, the Prophet said, إِسْبَابُ wudu عَلَى الْمَكَادِ Making a good wudu even though it's, it's, it's difficult and you may dislike it. Now, so first we want to understand that even something like wudu, which is one of the simplest of ibadat that we can do, that there is a dislike in this that the, the soul might dislike this and it's even difficult on the soul now to do this thing sometimes sometimes you see people just rush in wudu they don't they don't make it well now and one of the prophet the prophet saw some of his companions making wudu for he said he raised his voice even imam bukhari has a chapter rough assault Naam bil ilm, if that's the name of the chapter, raising your voice with knowledge. He saw his companions uh, making wudu, so he raised his voice and he said, Wailun lil aqabi min an nar, woe upon the hills from the hellfire, woe upon the heels. And they were, they, they, were, they were making wudu and they weren't wiping their feet correctly and completely. Because in it is some difficulty in it. Naam. But look at this difficulty, if you don't do it correctly, the Prophet raised his voice at his companion said, Wailun lil aqabi min an nar. Woe. And Wailun means that it's a threat of evil, a threat for punishment to these heels, to these feet that are uh, from the hellfire if you don't make wudu over them correctly. So in this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hadith of Zayd ibn Arqam, he says, Should I not inform you of that which Allah wipes away the sins because of this thing and he raises the ranks? He said the first one is bagul wudu, making a good wudu, al al Even when it's difficult and it's dislike, sometimes the water may be cold. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says la yuhafilu al al wudu'i illa al mu'min. No one preserves his wudu. He stays in wudu all the time except the believer. Except the believer. And this is an encouragement for a believer. Every time he uses the bathroom, he should make wudu. Now he don't just he just doesn't just make wudu when he wants to pray, but he stays in wudu all the time. And from that way, the times that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to make wudu is before he went to bed. He didn't go to bed what? He didn't go to bed uh when he wasn't in wudu. Even if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had relations with his wife at night, he wouldn't go to bed while he was junub in a state of impurity, if he didn't take a shower at that time, he would at least lighten this 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 state of impurity by making wudu. By making wudu. And who wants to get up out of the bed and make wudu and then go back to bed? Or who wants look at the days that we're in and it's the weather's cold outside to make wudu before they go to bed. Um, but these things are something that you dislike it or it might be difficulty it might be difficult. This is not the scale that we use to determine whether something's good or bad. I don't I don't want to do it. I'm going to leave it. No. The scale is based on what Allah has legislated for us in our religion. Now that's the first ayat that we want to look at. That something that you might dislike is good for you. And we want to understand that certain things in Islam you have to you have to you have to appreciate it by understanding why it has been legislated. Now I'm, I'm going to take for example, there are some uh, verses in the Quran that you may be trying to memorize and you can't get it, you can't get it every time you can't get it. But if, if sometimes you looked at the meaning of the verse, you looked up the meaning of the verse and the meaning of some of the words, it will become very easy. You looked up the meaning, the tafsir of this verse, 
you were like, wow, why I did no wonder I can't memorize it. I don't understand what I'm reading. But now that I understand the words and I understand what it means, it becomes easier. And the same thing with the actions of Islam. The same thing with the actions of Islam. Once you understand the benefit in it for you, it's going to be easy for you to implement it. Now, looking at this word uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions things that you might dislike. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the men regarding the woman, بالمعروف, And treat the woman with that which is correct. Treat them and deal with them with that which is correct. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِن كَرِهْتُمُهُنَّ If you dislike them, فَعَسَى أَنْ تَقْرَهُ شَيْئًا Perhaps you dislike something, وَيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا And Allah will put in it a lot of good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in this verse is combining between two things. Treating your wife well, even though you dislike her. And then he says, in this he didn't just say khayr, he said khayr and kathir. There's a lot of good in it. Well, how would you know? How would you know? Except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided this to you. Now, and guided you to this. That just don't make the fact that you dislike something about your wife. That that's it. It's over. It's not working. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse. We want to understand. Allah in this verse affirmed that you dislike her. And he's encouraging you to stay with her. Let's understand that. And Allah, 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 Allah knows and you don't know. So Allah says, فَإِن كِرِهْتُمُوهُنَّ If you dislike them. So Allah affirms that there are certain things that you dislike. Just there's certain things that you dislike about your wife. It, it may be like that. He says, فَإِن If this is the case. فَعَسَى أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا Perhaps you dislike something. وَيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Allah will put in a lot of good. Allah bring it out for you righteous children and children to that have a good mother and good father and a good home. It, it, it might be something to bring benefit back on you and somebody to be there for you when you're in need. And whatever the situation may be. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained in this verse and he has attached goodness with you being patient on that which is difficult and that which you dislike. Nah. And this is what we want to understand. From things that we dislike Don't sell your religion Just because something that you like Or something that you don't know Don't hand your religion over And compromise your religion Substitute your religion Or jeopardize your religion For some cheap old thrill From the religion That you might look this way Or you might sound this way Or that you might have another job There's thousands of occupations That you can obtain And still remain the the, the dignity of your religion There are so many occupations My dear sister There are so many things that you can do And maintain the dignity of your religion And the pleasure of your Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Near the end of Surah Al-Naziyat مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَعْوَى As for the one who fears standing before his Lord and he leaves off وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى and he prevented himself from following desires Why? Because he fears, he fears standing before Allah and this is a main ingredient that you have to have in your chest Fear. The one who fears standing before his Lord And he prevented himself from following desires The desires out there concerning dress Their desires out there concerning music Their desires out there concerning fawahish Have to do with boys They have to do with girls They have to looking at haram Listening to haram there's a lot of desires that you have to prevent your soul from. Now, once you keep on doing this, your soul is going to be reformed and it's going to be mustaqim and it's going to be on the natural disposition that's called the fitrah and you're going to like that which is correct. Now, the ones that do this to themselves and they prevent themselves from following desires because they fear Allah, their final outcome is what is jannah. I mean, this thing of Jannah, this is a reality, my dear brothers and sisters. Look at another verse. 
And I really like this verse to show the importance of what's good, what's beneficial. Sometimes people say, in, in this thing is benefit. Okay? And it's a benefit that we can't deny. It's an undeniable benefit. Just the fact that something has benefit in it doesn't mean that you compromise you compromise your religion for this thing. Because there is some benefit in it. No. You're here to be obedient to Allah. Not just gain, just the fact there's benefit in it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Surah Al-Baqarah verse 219. Yes, khamri wal maysir. They ask you about intoxicants and gambling toxicants drinking naam alcohol beverages and intoxicants and drugs using drugs using marijuana naam ask you about these things using intoxicants well mesa and gambling now gambling is is has become very easy they have apps on your phone you could just gamble you don't gamble just to see who's going to win you can gamble for all kinds of scores all kinds of situations all kinds of things these things are uh, available in abundance all kinds of intoxicants and they're exposed to our children now I'm exposed to grown ups there's a problem in the community Muslim community with intoxicants and gambling now, they ask you about intoxicants and gambling Allah says, Qul, say to them, say to them, Fihima ifmun kabirun wa manafi'u linnas. In it is a big sin and benefits for mankind. Let's stop right here. In it is a big sin. And this is from the Kaba'i, this is from the major sins. And benefits. Allah didn't say nefer. He said manafit, meaning this is the plural. There's several benefits in it for man. Allah used the plural. When he, he said there's there's a big sin, and there are benefits in it for mankind. Allah affirmed the benefit, but he affirmed the sin. Then Allah says, وَإِثْمُهُمَا أَكْبَرُ مِن نَفْعِهِمَا But the sin of these two is greater than the benefit of these two. The sin of these two things, the sin now, and the harm that comes from using intoxicants and gambling is greater than the benefit that is in it. We're finished. So just the fact that something has some benefit in it, that doesn't mean to go ahead and indulge in it. And there's, there's an issue that I, I, I pray that I never leave. And this is the issue of pictures. And this is the issue of of videos. Now I'm I, I I want to ask today, what are the pictures that are haram? Uh, there's so many there's so many hadiths from our prophet that are authentic that shows that taking pictures and that pictures are haram. That everybody has made uh, uh, ex exceptions to the rule. They have, they have made exception to the rule for every situation. I'm I'm left to ask, well, which ones are haram? Which are the pictures that are haram? Uh -huh. So, if somebody's going to say, and this has to do with our topic that we're in, when you video, when you put the video of the sheikh, this, this is good in it is benefit. No, the fact that something has benefit in it. This is not the deciding factor. It's not the deciding factor. Somebody says it's benefit in that. It's benefit in that. It's benefit in, in video. No. The benefit in the sheikh is his knowledge, not his face. The benefit in the sheikh. And you, my dear brother, that that that, that video tape your, your lectures, the benefit is not in your kufi on your head, your kufi or on your talkia, the benefit is not in your shiny bed that you spray up before the lesson. The benefit is not in your nice sweater that you put on before you you did this video. The benefit is in, in what you're teaching. The people do not have to see you. Seeing you is of no benefit. Now I'm going to ask you: Is seeing you? It can can it be a fitna on some people? Yes. Now you yourself, it could be a fitna on you. Now, and just, we just mentioned this verse here to understand that Allah 
compared between the sin of something and the benefit of something. Allah affirmed that in is a big sin and there's manafat linas. There's a number of benefits. A number of benefits. But when there's sin in it, it has it, over it, it's overwhelmed the benefit of it. So let's not sell our religion, jeopardize our religion, and substitute our religion. As the Prophet said, He sells his religion, he exchanges his religion for something small from the worldly affairs. Something small. A job, fame, status, name, notoriety, anything. But he's going to handle over the integrity and the honor of Islam and his obedience to Allah. In this last verse that we want to look at, in this last verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَنْكِحُ الْمُشْرِكَاتِ حَتَّى يُؤْمِنَّ وَلَا أَمَةٌ مُؤْمِنَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِنْ مُشْرِكَةٍ وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَتْكُمْ don't marry the mushrikeen women. And this is Kufaru Quraysh. Naam. Don't marry these mushrikeen women. Don't, don't marry these women from the idolaters. Don't marry them. Very a slave believing woman. The Muslim woman that's not, not, not the one that is, is a free woman. The Muslim woman that's a slave. Khairun min mushrikatin. A slave believing woman is better than a mushrik free woman. Even if she's pleasing to you. Ah, Allah affirmed that this mushrik is pleasing to you. Pleasing to your eye. And that you, you like what she has. She's pleasing to you. But even with the fact that you may like it, Allah affirmed it. Now, and I'm saying that you like it. Allah affirmed. Even if she's pleasing to you. Huh? So it's possible that something might be pleasing to us And Allah has prohibited us from it And on the other end Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَا تُنْكِحُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ حَتَّى يُؤْمِنُوا And don't marry your daughters off to mushrik men وَلَا حَتَّى يُؤْمِنُوا Until they believe وَلَا عَبْدٌ مُؤْمِنٌ A, mus, a, a, a believer slave A believing slave Khairun and mushrikin is better than a free mushrik. Someone that were idolatry. Walau a'jabakum. Even if you're pleased with him, you're pleased with his wealth, you're pleased with his status, you're pleased with whatever you have him. Even if you're pleased with whatever he has. Allah affirmed that the believers might be pleased with these people in some kind of way, but even with that, he has prohibited us from marrying them. Now, I'm this is what we want to take a look at today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of this verse says, Ula'ika yadu'una ila nar. These are calling to the hellfire. Nah? So there's things that you may like. Nah? There's certain things that you may find benefit in it, but it's calling to the hellfire. There's certain things that in it is difficulty and you may dislike it, but it's calling to wiping away sins and raising the ranks and calling into Jannah. These they are calling to the hellfire. Wallahu yadu ila jannati wal magfirati bi idni. And Allah's calling in, in the commandments that He gives us and the prohibitions, Allah is calling to Jannah and to forgiveness bi idni by His permission. And He explains the signs to mankind so that they may contemplate. So this is what we want you all to contemplate about this today. That something may be appealing to you and you may incline to it, but that is not the judge in the matter. And something may be, it may, it may turn you off and you might not like it. You might find it in difficulty. You might find that you're odd doing it. You're the only one do it. Nobody else does it but you. But that's not the judge in the matter. And if you hold fast to Allah, you will find success, you will find comfort for it, you will find comfort with it. Now, um, and you will find that your soul is enhanced and that you find real happiness and joy and comfort and tranquility with obedience to Allah. This is what we want to benefit 
from today. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his aid and his assistance. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayk.